Hey, Dr. Mountain, um, and if my colleagues are watching this, I hope y'all are doing well. I hope that uh, this weather that we're experiencing right now um, isn't uh, um, ruining your day, if you had any plans. Um, so the topic that I chose, and it was at first I've kind of felt a little confused with it, and I realized that I had asked to change my topic, and I was like, you know, this is something I can go with. And um, the topic I chose was how to hire and fire a staff member. Now, this can be in a church. This is not going to be in a church. This could be in a Christian business, not in a Christian business. But what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the more Christian aspect of it. And while I was thinking in my mind about this topic, I started to brainstorm. How did Jesus decide who his disciples were going to be? How did he... How did he know them by name? And I'd never thought of that before. And we always talk about our disciples, and we've spoken about a lot of them in uh, this semester pertaining to this class. And so I started looking, and I found Luke 6. And this is whenever the, uh, Jesus was going up to the mountainside, and he was praying day and night. And um, we don't know exactly what he was praying, but we know that he was praying for his disciples, for those um, men that were going to be continuing his uh, teachings after he leaves. And so whenever he came down from the mountainside, we know that he knew them by name. He was able to call them um, to come to him and uh, to uh, ask them that they would drop their belongings, drop whatever they were doing at that many time and follow him. And so I started thinking, you know, why, why, don't, we, why don't we have faith like Jesus did? Uh, did Jesus have faith? And um, I'm going to just dig in to my paper a little bit because I want to be able to, because um, there's so much information in here and I want to be able to say it correctly from what I type and I don't want to mislead you in the wrong direction. But um, whenever I was asking, did Jesus have faith? It's something that I, I, I came across and I was like, I never, I never, I've asked myself that, but I've never actually wanted to ask a professor that because then I felt like I would be kind of, questioning if he did have faith but uh as we find in luke 2 52 and i'm gonna read this it says jesus received more wisdom and statue um i didn't really read the verse itself but i'm i'm paraphrasing what it was uh what we find in luke 2 52 jesus received more wisdom and statue so we can see that jesus was not acquiring his four attributes of divinity which also includes omnipotent all right uh, uh, jesus was made subject to the law as we read in galatians 4 4 so we can c conclude that Jesus was understanding with his limitations of being a man. He, he understood that there were limitations of being a human, being a man on this earth, and that it was going to be completely different than being right hand beside the Lord God our Father. So he understood that, and he acted out on faith and trust in God as he was doing his daily will. He wasn't, he wasn't concerned if the Lord was going to provide these men, he knew that the Lord was going to provide his disciples, that he was going to choose the right 12 men that were going to um, continue his will whenever he leaves this earth, and that were going to obey, uh, abide by his laws, and that were going to trust in God through every decision that they make in their life. Um, and so, as we dig into how do we actually hire and fire a staff member, I've started questioning my, my, myself and saying, you know, how, was, how would I hire and fire a staff member? If I was going to hire somebody, I would want to hire somebody that would have the right credentials, who would um, know exactly what their job was going to do, who would actually fulfill what I'm asking them to do. So then I would actually start thinking, okay, I need to create a list of what I'm actually looking for for this job position. Um, requirements. Uh, do they need to have a college degree? Do they not need to have a college degree? Um, uh, let's see. Uh, is there experience that I need them to have? Um, or is it just a starting out job? What's the pay going to be? And as I'm thinking this, I'm like, you know, I can't figure this out on my own. I can't. I, I seriously have to pray and ask the Lord to bring somebody there, to bring that right person. Because I could have 15 people apply for this position, and I don't want to choose someone out of my judgment on them. Oh, they're right for this position just by maybe how they presented themselves that day or maybe by their resume that they had, or where, what college they went to. I, I know several people that um, whenever they are applying, or whenever they're um, trying to f uh, fill a position, they look at the college they went to immediately, and if it's not a college of their statute, they throw it in the trash can. They don't even give that person a chance, which in my opinion, that is 
blatantly disrespectful because that person that sent you their resume worked their butt off no matter what college they went to it doesn't matter okay that person could have went to Yale and then you had somebody who went to South Carolina Upstate but the person in South Carolina Upstate could have such a better work environment such a better work ethic than the person who went to Yale they could have more experience than the person who went to Yale so just by looking at a university is not the way that you want to go about hiring somebody so you want to dig deeper you want to find out what their life is outside of work whenever you bring this person in, you want to have all these questions lined out so that you know or if you do over the phone call first I was looking on a website people said that they actually did a phone call first before they brought that person in and if it was a Christian business whenever they would bring that person in after the phone call went if they thought the phone call went very well they'd make sure that everybody in the work environment at that business was prepared and informed that they're bringing somebody in as a possible new employee they're bringing them in for the second interview pro uh, process so if it is a Christian's business you're allowed to let your other employees know and if they come in con con contact with that person let's say if they come to the secretary first the secretary may feel the need to pray for that person before they go in their interview which sets the atmosphere for the actual job position in such a high level already for that person who's applied for it and so as I was reading this I was like you know that's actually a really really good idea like you want this to be the easiest interview for this person so that when they come in they are fully prepared they feel good they um, don't feel any tension in the air they just feel like this is a normal conversation that they're having about a job interview because a lot of people get stressed a lot of people get anxiety over things like this and so you don't want them to be put in a position where they're feeling tension or feeling that there's something wrong um, with themselves that they start evaluating themselves and be like oh I'm sorry I didn't, I didn't dress this right way um, I, I, I don't look like these other people and then, then now they're now they're questioning the whole thing and now the interview process is just gonna go down the drain possibly because now they're thinking only that um, and something that I I kind of learned from this is in the state of South Carolina we have a um, a, a, a law that says employment at will okay um, and I'm kind of going into the hire uh, to the firing portion now um, an employment at will means that me as an employee can leave when I want to don't have to give too many two weeks notice um, if I don't like the job I can just leave and not say a word the employer can fire me um, without having a major reason um, now, some of the things that uh, limit the doctrine regarding that you cannot term as someone because of race. You can't say, you, oh, you're, I'm sorry, you're an Hispanic and we don't want you working here. Now, that, that, is, that is not right. You can't do it by color. Uh, you can't do it by religion, national origin, uh, sex, including pregnancy, uh, disability, age, at least 40 years old, um, but this doctrine may apply to different states. The, the, these uh, examples that I gave you that South Carolina has, um, they may be completely different in North Carolina. But you can't fire somebody because of those things. Um, but you can't, you, you, and whenever you do fire somebody, you don't have to tell them why. You can just like, um, we just feel it's best that you no longer work here. But something that, um, and I'm going to sit this down because I don't like holding it. Something that I, uh, I've noticed is when firing somebody, you realize that you are hurting not just the employee, but you're hurting the family. You're hurting the income. My mom, she works as an investigator for PNC, fraud, all banking, everything with PNC. And um, she has to fire a lot of people. A lot of people. I say it on a weekly basis. She fires at least 15 people every week. Now, some weeks it could be five some weeks it could be 30 depending on what the situation was um, how many people were involved and when my mom first started this job she realized that this was gonna be very hard she'd never had to do this before and um, when she fired that first person she cried and she had a, a sense of feeling that this person was a Christian and she asked if she could pray for them and uh, my mom prayed for that person over the phone they don't know her life, they don't know who she is except just her name that she works for PNC. And my mom doesn't know anything about them either. And so I asked her, I said, Mom, how, how hard is it to fire somebody? She said, Adam, it's the worst thing because 
right now we're dealing with a time of crisis with uh, COVID-19 and now a lot of people are losing their jobs um, just because businesses are not allowed to pay or don't have the funds to pay um, for people being out of work. And now since South Carolina is going and the route it's going, it's gonna start hitting a lot of South Carolina um, um, homeowners, a lot of people who live here, a lot of residents. And so she said, it's a hard time right now because I'm firing people and I know that they, they won't have an income. And she said, it's even worse during Christmas. And she says, what I normally do is if I know that they're gonna be fired, I'm not gonna fire them until December 26th. I'm gonna let them have a Christmas with their family, a full day with their family, not being worried about a phone call or work. And then I'll break them the news the 26th. And I told her, I said, that's, that's very kind of you. I, I honestly don't know how you do it. But when we fire somebody, we, are, we realize that we are, we are hurting them. We are hurting that family member. We may have had this employee for 10 plus years and then they have just done something completely wrong in the business, which could have destroyed the business. So you had to eliminate the issue. Um, and in a verse, I, I, wanna, I, I, I brought, I, my mind came to this and I wanna talk about Proverbs 25, four through five. All right, Proverbs 25, four through five talks about um, how uh, essentially, uh, it, 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 um, dross in the verse is a residue that is left over after the ore has been purified by the fire. It is not needed. Much like a work environment, think of dross as the wicked employee, okay? That person who's been working there for 10 years may have done something so wicked that it hurts the business. You could have lost $10,000 in one day because of that one person, all right? And so what you have to do is you have to remove that wickedness in, in, your, in your business. Now let's say if it's somebody who's only been working there for six months and they have caused arguments, they have um, always stated their opinion, they don't listen, they are rude and disrespectful to you and to other employees as you are the employer, um, and you realize that this is just not down the road. They may have had an excellent interview, but their interview could have been a show. That's why um, when we do hire somebody, we have to check references. We have to realize that you know we are not, uh, we don't wanna bring somebody into this business where they may have left another business because they left on their own terms. They weren't fired yet, but they left on their own terms and they may were about to be fired. So we don't want to be bringing in bad baggage, negativity. And so you have to remove that draw. You have to remove it all so that your business actually grows. And something that I noticed is whenever you remove your negativity, everyone else becomes happier. They enjoy their job. They get more work done. That's what more, more importantly thing, like they get their work done. They feel the need to actually not have to worry about somebody coming and talking to them about something else. So they're able to actually work and get things completed. Um, but going back to firing, when we fire somebody, we, we are just, we may have, they, like I said, been here for 10 plus years. We know them, we know their family, we've had barbecues with them, we may have gone on vacation with them, been in their house, they've been in your house, and it's a friendship, it's a bond that you have now had to get rid of. And in the, Christian, in the Christian business, you are able to do this. You are able to pray for them. You are able to pray for them right then and there. But you see, when it fires somebody, you don't want it to be a long, dry, dr uh, a long, dragged out thing. You want it to be short. You want it to be sweet. You want to be. You want them to realize that you know this is a termination. There is no chance that you can get your position back. You don't want them to be thinking when they leave, "Ooh, I can come back here and work." Maybe no. You want them to understand that this is a termination. That you are leaving this business. I'm sorry, um, and I understand that your wife and your kids are gonna be hurting at this time, but this is why. And then you know what you could do? You could possibly give them um, instructions on how they could improve. Um, maybe something, something that they actually did. Maybe they didn't steal from the company. Um, they, didn't, they, may, they, may, they didn't lie. Uh, they just may have not completed something on time. And that could be, that's a, that's a, that's a personal thing, like you're not, completing task on time, your time management issues. So you can you can throw that in there, but you can do it in a way that's not rude or demeaning and say that, you know, I'm praying for you. I'm praying that the Lord will open up a position, that he's closing a position now and he's opening you up another position, maybe three months down the road, maybe four months down the road, to give you time to think about time management, to figure out time, things on your own um, so that whenever you're prepared for this next job, that you won't have that same issue. And like... It's just, 
hiring and firing a staff member is very important. It really is. You don't want to hire somebody who's going to bring the business down. But you have to fire somebody who's going to ruin it. Who's going to hurt in the business. And so it's, it's something that... Uh, it was a really good topic. It was. Um, it was something that I really enjoyed. And I... Um, I want to leave uh, with just, a, I think, a couple last minute things um, so that I'm, I'm making sure that I'm saying things right. When we hire a fire staff member, we focus on the main person we ought to strive to live by, and that was Jesus. He was a perfect man, he did no wrong, and he focused on his main reason for being here on earth, which was to fulfill his father's will, share the gospel, um, and let people know that there's someone who are out here who loves and cares for them in ways that no one else will, because no one knew of him. And that's crazy to think, no one knew of Jesus before he was born. And then when he died, everyone knew about him. And they believed that he was Lord and Savior, which he is. Um, but when we pray and hire for a staff member, we can't, we can't depend on ourselves. We have to pray and ask God. You can't just think that it's going to fall in your lap and be like, this is the person that we are to hire. This person right here, great credentials, great resume great experience. No, you have to pray. You have to ask the Lord to eliminate the people that are hiring, that are um, applying for this position. Uh, when we fire somebody, it's not, a, it's not we, that we despise them. It's that they were just possibly hired in the first place because we thought that they were going to be a great candidate, but then we realized that they're probably not in the right mindset or that we were focused that at a time while we were hiring them, we were focused on just trying to get a position filled. We weren't being patient on the Lord. So to bringing that person along uh, at the right time. This this was such a, just a, I get an, I, I guess an eye-opening experience because it allows me to realize that if I'm gonna be in a position one day and I'm gonna have to hire somebody to teach my band, a certain position or section. I need to hire that section with the best with the students interest. Their best interest at my heart. When we fire when we hire somebody we want to make sure that our employees have a great work atmosphere and we don't want to disturb that atmosphere. When we fire somebody, we want to make sure that they're gonna be okay um and that uh that they understand and it's going to take some time for them to sink in, but that they actually have a purpose here on this world. That that one tiny thing does not describe who they are. Um, yeah. That's all I have to say, Dr. Melton. I, um, I thank you for listening. And uh, I hope that uh, during this time of us being away from North Greenville, I hope that it hasn't been too hard for you as a professor. Uh, some, I've, it's not been difficult, but some professors are, of course, uh, a little bit uh, difficult to work with in, the, in these terms. But thank you for listening. I, uh, I hope that um, me stuttering and how I look as an appearance doesn't, uh, doesn't make my paper look bad. Um, thank you for being a great professor. I really appreciate it. I really, I came in here kind of, and I'll be honest with you, I came in here kind of like, I'd say, felt like I wasn't worthy enough to be in the classroom just because I knew I was surrounded by a bunch of, uh, um, Christian studies, uh, students who have gone through the department and they, they know God's word very well just because they've, that's what their class has been based off, based off of. 
but I, I appreciate you pushing me and um, giving me feedback and helping me out. I really do. It's been a great time. And um, I, I don't say this a lot. You and maybe two other professors at North Greenville have made my semester that I was with your, like for instance, this semester, you've made my semester with those other professors. They've made my semester. They've made an impact in my college career. And you have. I know we don't know each other very well, but you have. And so I really do thank you for that. I really do. So um, thank you again. And I hope that you have a great week.